in our prior discussions we have talked about laplace transforms so we can take a very simple analogy to reiterate that if we have say two numbers which are big number say there's a number which we call as a and it is multiplied with b so we can perform a direct multiplication and achieve a result say c but you can also take a log of this function that is log of a times b and from the logarithmic properties you would have log of a plus log of b so from multiplication over here we have moved to addition which is a simpler function or a simple operator we can equate this to log of c and eventually we would have to take an anti log which would be dependent on the base of this log so if we take the anti log of c we would eventually reach this result c similarly in the present context suppose that we have a linear time invariant system with an impulse response h of t and we convolve this impulse response h of t with an input x of t we can use a graphical convolution method to achieve y of t what we can also do is we can take a laplace transform of this function and that would result into an x of s h of s and in the s domain the convolution operator which was a difficult operator would change into a multiplication which is a simpler operator and we say that this is our y of s that is output in the laplace domain as from here we can take inverse laplace transform to find again the output y of t so our present discussion right now deals with the inverse laplace transform so again uh, if x of t is a signal that is in time domain we can take the laplace transform x of s by integrating from minus infinity to infinity this signal x of t and multiplying it with a complex exponential e minus s t d t so this is our laplace transform so going back from the s domain to the time domain this can be done in couple of methods the first of this method is called the contour integration So that is you can find x of t from x of s by having a weighing factor of 1 over 2 pi j and then we have an integration which is a contour integral x of s e over here it was minus now we would have e plus st and the integration would be with respect to variable ds so the limit of integration is sigma minus j infinity that is j omega to sigma plus j infinity so for a given sigma we are integrating we are integrating with respect to omega which is from minus infinity to infinity so this is the first method and as it can be observed that this is quite involved hence we move to the second method of taking the inverse laplace transform so we may call this as time and laplace pair method in this method uh, we have two more steps the first step is that if needed we will resort to partial fraction expansion 
and then we would use a lookup table for uh, the time domain and s domain pairs so this table uh, is table 9.2 extracted from uh, the textbook signals in the system uh, by oppenheim and wilski and then we have 16 uh, transform pairs of signal in time domain and their transforms in Laplace domain for a given region of convergence. So we will be using this table as a lookup table to take the inverse Laplace transform. So let us look into a couple of examples to have some further understanding of how we can take the inverse Laplace transform. The first example x of s is equivalent to 1 over s plus 1 and s plus 2 and our region of convergence that is real part of s is bounded between minus 2 and minus 1 so from x of s we are asked to find x of t so from here we can plot the s plane So we have a pole at minus 1 and another pole at minus 2 and the region of convergence is over here in between these two. So as a first step we will be taking partial fraction expansion uh, to simplify x of s. This x of s would simply be a over s plus 1 plus b over s plus 2. And then we can solve for the coefficients a and b say we would have 1 a s plus 2 plus b s plus 1 so at s equal to minus 2 we would be able to extract b so this would be equal to minus 1 and similarly at s equal to minus 1 we would be able to extract a coefficient a and this is simply equivalent to 1 so we have x of s 1 over s plus 1 minus from here b 1 over s plus 2 so this pole is over here and the roc is towards the left of it so this suggests that for this particular case the real part of s is less than minus 1 similarly for 2 which is over here this states that the ROC is towards the right of it so this would indicate that for this uh, fraction the real part of s is greater than minus 2 and this using uh, pair 6 in the table given so this is simply e minus 2t u of t and we have a minus here and and this is from pair 7 of the table and this is actually equivalent to minus e minus t u of minus t so this is our x of t So this was actually what we wanted to find that is the inverse Laplace transform of x of s so in the first example we have used uh, the partial fraction expansion and then used the lookup table to finally achieve the inverse Laplace transform in the next example we would look into how we can take the inverse Laplace transform if we have repeated poles so in example 2 we have x of s which is equivalent to 4s square plus 4s plus 4 and this is divided by s square s square plus 3s plus 2 and we are given with an information that the region of convergence is right sided so we are given with x of s and the information about roc and we are asked to find x of t 
So we can just simplify x of s by taking the roots of uh, this function in the denominator. So we simply have 4s square plus 4s plus 4 and s square s plus 1 and s plus 2. So since this is right sided, so this would mean that our s plane has a pole at minus 1 and then it has it has a pole at minus 2 and then there are two poles at origin the first pole and then again the second pole and the ROC is towards the right of it so again we will take the partial friction expansion and we would have x of s and for the repeated roots or poles we have a1 by s squared plus a2 by s so that covers the s squared part of it and then we are left with b by s plus 1 and b by s plus 2 so the solution of a1 is simply uh, 4 s squared plus 4 s plus 4 over we can take out this s square and we would be left with s plus 1 and s plus 2 and we are setting s is equal to 0 if you set s equal to 0 in this function so we would be having a 0 over here and a 0 over here so we would be left with 2 so this would be 4 over this would be 0 and this would be 0 so 4 over 2 so our a1 is equal to 2 so for the case of repeated root a2 is quite significant over here we have simply uh, two repeated poles or roots so say we are having a kth order uh, repeated pole so in this case we can have a k and this is equivalent to so this is the formulation to find the coefficient of repeated roots so in our present case we are only interested in a2 that is we only have an order of 2 so this n which is an order so presently n is equal to 2 and moreover this p is the position of pole but in our case the pole is at origin you can see over here the pole is at origin so for our case p is equal to 0 apologies there are minus here this would be equal to 0 for our present case so hence a2 that is for the second coefficient which is over here 2 so for this this would simply be 1 and then we have d by ds the value of k over here is 2 and 2 minus 1 is 1 so simply we have d of s again the value of pole p is equal to 0 so this is simply s and the order is n is equal to 2 order of the repeated pole times x of s For s is equal to 0 so this is simply d by ds so s square if we multiply s square with x of s so this s square would cancel with this s square and we would be left with simply 4 s square 4 s plus 4 over s plus 1 and s plus 2 and we have to set s equal to 0 later on so the differentiation of the rational function we are having say this is f of x and this is g of x so we would have g of x and the derivative of the numerator f of x minus derivative of the denominator g of x times f of x over g of x whole square 
so this would simply be s plus 1 s plus 2 and then if you take the derivative of this so this would simply be 4 s plus 4 and then if you take the derivative of the denominator it would be easier to take the denominator from here that is s square plus 3 s plus 2 so you would have 2 s plus 3 2s plus 3 times f of x that is 4s square plus 4s plus 4 over s plus 1 and s plus 2 whole square so this is simply s square plus 3s plus 2 whole square and of course we have to set the value of s equal to 0 so if we set the value of s equal to 0 in this function so we would be getting a2 equal to minus 1. So now we have a value of a1 which is equivalent to 2 and a2. For the rest of roots, uh, they are not repeated and they are fairly easy to solve. So we can say that at s equal to minus 1, so this is going to give us b equal to 4 and similarly at s equal to minus 2 we are going to get c equivalent to minus 3 so using a1 a2 b and c as coefficients over here so eventually we would have 2 by s square minus 1 by s from here plus 4 by s plus 1 and minus 3 by s plus 2. Note that ROC is right sided. So using pair 4, so we would have simply 2t u of t and from here we are going to use pair 1 so this would simply be delta of t from this and this we would be using pair 6 to achieve 4e minus t u of t and minus 3 e minus 2t u of t so this is our x of t